always fun to catch up with ESPN NFL draft analyst, Mr. Jordan Reed. It is that time of the year where you are very, very busy, sir. I want to get to the commanders, but let's start at the top. Uh, the Panthers make a huge trade to go up to number one. I think it should be Bryce Young. I'm a huge fan. I think he anticipates on a level you don't see a lot of college quarterbacks do, but I get that he's smaller than I am. And this is the big leagues. What do you think? Yeah, I'm right there with you. I was I wouldn't say shocked about the trade. I thought it would happen a little bit later than what had happened, but it's clear that the Bears wanted to have a plan, a clear plan going into free agency, uh, some of the, the positions that they needed to address. But the Panthers, we knew with the veteran retreads that they had, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, I think Dave Tepper just said enough is enough. Let's just go up and get our guy no matter what the draft capital may cost. And that's exactly what they did. But I'm right there with you. I think Bryce Young should be the number one overall pick. He's been my QB one since the summer. His poise, his moxie, uh, his play patience, just everything that he does at the quarterback position is what you want. But he is five foot ten and a half. He's little, man. Four pounds. He's small. But what was what's I his mean, official weight? It was 204 pounds, which is what he measured at at the combine. But there's a reason why he didn't throw at the combine. We knew he had a lot of extra weight on him trying to bulk up. But just strictly talking about the player, he's everything that you want at the position. Dude, what happens if, I mean, just to keep it in Washington, Deron Payne or John Allen brings a 195-pound a dude down? You know what I mean? Like, but I mean, but here's the thing, though, JP, you can't hit quarterbacks like that's that true. anymore. You're not allowed to so put your I, weight on them. I think that's an area where the Panthers may feel comfortable with, assuming Bryce Young is the guy. But also, he does a really good job of not taking clean hits. He's very slippery. Now, he's not Kyler Murray. He's not that type of athlete. But he very rarely takes those square on or head on shots to his body. So I think he'll be fine long term. All right, let's let's move down a little bit. Um, any major surprises you think in the in the top ten? Picks that people are going to be like, wow, where'd that come from? Well, the big debate right now is what Houston is going to do at number two overall. I'm hearing different things. When I was at the Senior Bowl, I was hearing Will Anderson all day long. And then there's whispers about they like the quarterbacks. And then now there's whispers they only like Bryce Young. And if even if C.J. Stroud is there at two, they're going to take Will Anderson. So there's so many different things that you're hearing right now. But I think they have to take a quarterback, honestly. There's no way you can try it out Case Keenum or Davis Mills for another year there. I just don't see that happening. No. And as somebody in Washington that at the time, the Chase Young pick was the right pick. You look back at it and you're like, you had a number two overall. You almost have to swing for a QB there. You almost have to because it's hard to maintain that level of of draft height, I, I suppose. Um, let's get to 16 and the commanders, which is the dead middle of this thing and kind of keeps them in this perpetual cycle of around 500, frankly. Um, I don't think any of these QBs will be available. If they are, I don't think they're going to take one. I, I I, think they want to trade back. What are you hearing about Washington? Well, there's a lot of players that they do like at 16. They're just unsure about which ones they're exactly are going to be available to them. Two positions I think they could target, offensive tackle. I think they have a clear need there. I think they need to provide some competition to Charles Leno. Uh, he's clearly not the long-term solution at that left tackle spot. So I could see them bringing in a young offensive tackle to provide some depth or some competition there. They brought in Andrew Wiley, bringing him over from Kansas City. He's probably going to be penciled in as your right tackle with with Cosme moving back inside. So I think offensive tackle is definitely one area, but cornerback is another. Finding somebody opposite of Benjamin St. Juice, who was a, who was a really good player for them last season, the third-round pick. Uh, so just finding a pairing with him. Uh, I think cornerback could be another option for them at 16. So I want to start with the tackles because to me, if you can get a left tackle in the future, you do it because it's way too expensive on the free agency market. People are all over the place with their who they like. Who do you like? Well, I don't think you can go wrong with a lot of these guys in this draft class. Now, who do I think is going to be available at 16? Right. That's going to be the tricky part just because I think the run on offensive tackles could start at number nine overall with the Chicago Bears, and then there's plenty of other teams in that range that need offensive tackles. Tennessee at 11 needs one. The Jets at 13 need one, and there's plenty of others. After that point, to even New England at 14, I think they could be in the market for offensive tackles. So the commanders are in a tricky spot of where they could be at the tail end of when the offensive tackle run starts. Uh, so Darnell Wright from Tennessee is one that I think they're going to have a lot of interest in. A player that I got to see up close this year, when he played against South Carolina, but of any prospect in this draft class, I think he's aced 
the pre-draft process. He was great during the season. He shut down Will Anderson. That was his best game of the year. Played really well against B.J. Ojolari and also Brian Brissy, uh, two players that we'll probably see go inside of the top 40 picks somehow. And then he goes out at the Senior Bowl and performs really well. And then to top that off, he does well at the Combine. So he just continuing to check boxes. So I definitely think he could be one player available to them. At 16 and then another is Broderick Jones of Georgia. Now, it could be a stretch saying that he's going to be there just because there are some evaluators that feel as if he has the most upside yeah. of any offensive tackle highest in his draft right? class. Yep. He has the highest ceiling. Now, presently, he's not the best, but in down the road, a lot of people would think he has the the the, uh, the highest ceiling of any in this draft class. So those are two names I would throw out there. It, it's funny with those two guys specifically, and it's funny that it's Tennessee versus Georgia, right, that we're talking about. <laughs> um, the, the film against Bama where Wright shut down – Will Anderson, I, I I think that should be all he needs, frankly. If, if Will Anderson is the dude w- that we all keep hearing he is, that to me really stood out. But it reminds me of, uh, you know, a little more than 10 years ago now when the the Washington franchise had to decide between Trent Williams and Russell Okung. And it was Trent had this higher ceiling, but was a little, you know, people were a little unsure coming out of Oklahoma. Okung was considered kind of the more finished product. And Trent worked out pretty well. I I, I like both those guys a lot. What do you think about the big fella from Oklahoma? Um, Anton uh, Harrison. Yeah, Harrison. Yeah, I like him a lot. There's a lot of mixed opinions about him. Um, Is that a just his finishing. 16? It just depends on who you talk to, honestly. There's some people that like him in the top 15, and there's some people that think he's a back end of the first, early second round type. I have him in the back end of the first round, early second round grade. That's what I have him right now. So he would be a reach for me at 16. Um, I just don't think he has as high of a ceiling as some of the others in this draft class, but he's steady. I mean, he's solid. He's probably going to come in and be a day one starter for you. But as far as long-term down the road, I think he's going to be a B-level starter for you while you probably can get some more A-level players prior to him. Feels like a a long-term right tackle too to me. Um, Number one corner kind of consensus, I would say, is Christian Gonzalez. I don't think he'll be there at 16. The, The corner most often mentioned with the commanders at 16 is Joey Porter Jr., I'm not sure he's the right fit. Who's the corner you would you would see there? What about my Terp? Yeah, he's one of my favorite overall players in this yeah. draft class. I, I love me some Deontay Banks, man. He's another player I got to see up close this year. Every bit of six foot, 215 pounds, rocked up build. He's everything that you want in the position. He adds that attitude, that junkyard dog mentality that you love to see at the position. He'd come up and run support. He's like a linebacker in a cornerback's body. Very smooth in his technique, has ball skills. Does need to get a little bit a little bit better as far as his ball production, finding the ball in the air, but I think that'll come over time. But his upside, I think, is immense, and it would not, not surprise me if he ends up being one of the better players in this draft class, and I agree with you. I think he's a little bit of a better fit, especially with Washington wanting to play predominantly zone, so having his back to the sideline a little bit more. Um, and that's an area where Porter Jr. hasn't shown a lot of consistency in just because he's a little bit handsy right now and he likes to fill out wide receivers when they're running through routes. So him being an oppressed man or a true cover one type of scheme will be better for him. While Banks, he's the best of both worlds. I think he can thrive in zone or he can he can survive in man too. Well, and six foot two fifteen to on a regular person might sound kind of normal, but Corners are usually rangy and wiry. Six foot two fifteen for a corner is jacked, I, and I, I want yeah. people to kind of understand that. Um, let's let's get to some sexy stuff. Kind of the clickbait portion of our <laughs> draft preview here. Uh, Bijan Robinson at sixteen. I don't think it's yeah. happening, but he's a hell of a player. I think this is going to be the biggest shock of where people or where he goes in the draft class, just because nobody knows. Like even when I'm sitting down and doing mock drafts. It's just hard to project just because you don't know how teams feel about taking a running back in the first round. But it seems as if we get one to go every single year, no matter if you feel as if they are devalued, which they are. I don't think there's any reason to take one in the first round. That's just my honest opinion. Um, But when you're talking about a player of B. John stature, a player that's a top five consensus player in this draft class, sometimes you just have to throw out the devaluation of the position and like the draft is a big dart throw for everyone. But with Bijan, not saying he's a safe pick. I don't like using that. But he's one player that translates really well to the next level. So if you want more upside at the running back position, and Brian Robinson has been a good player for him. Antonio Gibson is going to factor into the rotation too. But those guys don't have nearly the upside that Bijan Robinson has right away. And you look at what Saquon's done for the Giants. And when there are those 
exceptional talents at running back that make you reconsider the 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 valuation of the position to your point last one you're excellent at what you do and we appreciate your time what's more likely for the commanders round one a quarterback or a trade back oh a trade back without yeah, question I, yeah i like just speaking to some of the players excuse me some of the players some of the scouts within the building they just feel confident about sam howe they feel good about jacoby Brissett, and they're just going to let it play out um, Eric Bieniemy seems to be very confident in Sam Howell and his abilities. Just listening to his introductory press conference, he seems to be fired up about working with both Jacoby Brissett and then also Sam Howell. So they seem to be content with the two quarterbacks that they have at the top of the depth chart. Thank you, buddy. A little more than a week and you get to get some sleep. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks as <laughs> always, JP.